Welcome to Solid Camp Professor. I'm Sydney, your Solid Camp Professor, with one of many videos available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In this session, we'll be showing you our new HSR operation called Hybrid Rib Roughing. Hybrid Rib Roughing has been especially designed to work on core parts working from the outside in, and also where you have ribs inside the part itself, so especially thin ribs, where the problem with thin ribs that if you rough it down all the way to the bottom and didn't do a finish, because it gets to be too thin, you would break off the part many times. What a hybrid rib roughing does is it only goes down to a specific point and then works its way in on that last rough cut and does small steps to finish off the machining on that rib. Once it finishes that particular height, only then will go down to the next height, again, doing a rough cut around the ribs itself and doing the same thing, doing it in small cuts to finish off each rib and then again, going down even further on the part. Let's take a look at how this works. If I were to open up my operation, you can see we have the operation of hybrid rib roughing. We have our geometry, we have our tools, I'm going to be using a 10 millimeter end mill. We have our constraint boundaries as shown over here. And then we have our passes. In my passes, I'll be going down up until this surface over here. In my passes, I've also done a step down of every one millimeter, and I'll get back to that in a moment. Next in our passes field, we have this new option here called roughing finishing. In roughing finishing, we have our step over, how much we want our tool to step over every single time as it gets closer to the actual rib itself. And then we have our number of levels. What number of levels does is as follows. As I've mentioned before, we had our step down of every one millimeter. What the number of levels will do will actually go down that total amount three times. In other words, it'll go down three millimeters towards the bottom, and then it'll clear it off up until five millimeters before the wall itself. Once it gets to that point, it'll clean each step one millimeter at a time until it gets down to the level that the roughing cut got to before. Once it does this, then it'll go down to your next amount of number of levels and do the same thing again every one millimeter. Let's take a look exactly how this works. If I were to run my simulation, you'll see the tool is working now from the outside and as it gets closer to the rib, you'll see that it'll stop. And now, I'll zoom in over here. It had cleared down up until here, and now it's going down that one millimeter that I talked about. As it goes around the part, you can see, now it'll go to the next rib, clearing off one millimeter on that one, and then to the last rib over here. Again, clearing off another millimeter. Once it finishes that one millimeter, it'll then go down to the next millimeter, clearing off that step. Again, to the next rib, another millimeter over there. And then to the third rib, finishing off that millimeter. Once it finishes off that step, then it'll go down to the next step. And this will do this on this entire part until it gets to the very end over there. Once it gets down to the floor itself, then it'll go down to the next level, repeating the exact same thing it did before, making those small steps. And notice the advantage of this is, it leaves a lot of material on the bottom, keeping it strong as it's working its way down, avoiding breakage of the ribs itself as it clears all the way down to the very bottom of the part. Now, Let's go back into our passes, into our roughing finishing, and take a look at some of the other options that we have over there. We have here something called restrict offsets. What this does to, can minimize the amount of offsets you're doing from the part itself, 
And this is especially good when you have a part that was pre-machined and most of the material is taken away already, but there was material left over to do finishing operations. So for example, I can have this set at restrict offset for one offset only. If I were to run my simulation, what you'll see is as follows. You can see the material that was left over from my previous operation. And now, when I start working on it, it'll do a minimum amount of offsets, only one offset before it does the finishing cuts. So we don't have to always go in from the entire material from the outside as shown over here. It's doing the exact, cutting the exact same way, only doing it, the, however, with restricted amount of offsets of one offset before it does the finishing cut as shown over here. Now, another option we have here is something called boundary pass. Now, before I activate this, let's take a look at the simulation for a moment. As we run our simulation, you'll see that it starts from the outside according to the shape of the ribs that are inside and works its way always with the shape of the ribs. Now, let me stop this now and go to boundary passes. What boundary passes does is as follows. It allows you to first work on the outside boundary with a pass, say with an offset of two and a half millimeters, and then work on the actual shape of the ribs itself. If I were to run my simulation, you'll see that it will first clear a pass on the part itself on the outside before taking the shape of the ribs and then working on the shape of the ribs itself. Again, doing it exactly on each step down as well. First the outside boundary and then the shape of the ribs. Now, another option we have in our finishing is as follows. What we've been doing right now all the time is working our finishing levels during our cutting down. In other words, when we were when we reached that level that we wanted to get to, it stopped, went back up, and did the finishing cut. In other words, during the roughing. And we did it also going downwards each time. In other words, going from our first millimeter, second millimeter, and then to our third step as well. We can open this up and do during upwards, where it will go down to its full step and then work its way up roughing out. In other words, go from its third step to the second step to the first step. Let's take a look at the simulation. And as you can see, after it takes its first step all the way down towards the bottom, this big step over here, and I'll slow this down so that we can see this a lot better, you'll see that it'll work its way up. Let me zoom in now to the step itself. And you see it took that first step at the bottom. And now it takes the next step going up, and the same thing on each step, working from the bottom towards the top. And then it will repeat that at each step following. Now what we can also do is as follows. We can also open this up and have it do it after our roughing steps. In other words, it'll go all the way down to the bottom and only then will it start doing its finishing cuts from that five millimeters in. If we were to take a look at our simulation, you'll see that it'll do all the roughing cuts all the way down to the bottom, leaving that five millimeters on each side on the part itself. And then once it gets to the very bottom of the part as shown here, then it'll go back to the top, going down each millimeter each time to finish off the part. A large amount of material to be taken off. And notice it does each one every millimeter and then goes down to its steps. For more videos on SolidCam Professor, please go to our website, www.solidcam.com, and look for the tab called SolidCam Professor. Thank you for joining us on SolidCam Professor. Take care and have a nice day.